So hello everybody, <clears throat> my name is Christian Hock from Siemens, maybe you noticed me before I was standing there. So <clears throat> now we heard a lot of things about companion specifications, about OPC UA and about all those nice things. Just, it's all about data, but with OPC UA of course, oops, there's something on the ground here, I have to take care. You can, can get structured and meaningful information beside data for the further processing. You can provide controlled, secure, and cost-efficient access to a machine. You can communicate with systems from other vendors very easily and very smoothly, even if changes occur because of OPC UA, it's by the nature, it's browsable that you can see if an interface is changing. So, and of course, you can create standardized interfaces between machines. This you heard now before from Andreas. He was talking about companion specifications a lot. Now, my goal today is everybody hearing about companion specification, about OPC UA. And of course, if you are maybe a device implementer, a system integrator, some end user, you ask yourself, how much will that cost to integrate me and how what I have to do if I have a running machine, if I have a running plant, can I adapt OPC UA with a companion specification very easily? Or do I have to rewrite maybe my whole program if it's a PLC program? Do I have to buy new devices? What can I do? So I will give you here now just an example how you can do it with a Siemens PLC 1500. Just make a little bit of excourse to the basic elements of OPC UA, because never you heard about that there are existing object, object types, variable and variable types, properties, methods, things like that. So it's always clearly defined as an OPC UA type system. This is usually that what you also get when you're getting a companion specification. So define, say define then a, <clears throat> a machine type, for example, for rubber machines, and so on. They have their variables, they have their properties, and they have, of course, methods also there. So methods are also very important in OPC UA because they're reducing the complicated handshakes between the devices. So when you had today with a PLC, you ask, I want to send you data. So the PLC said, yes, maybe you can send data, then you send your data, then again, the feedback is, I have sent all the data and then you say finish. So with the OPC me methods, this is a straightforward way. Beside that, and the OPC UA type system is like if you have a, some programming language, you call it a class. It's a class, it's a description of the implementation. What can you expect if you use it or what do you need to implement for that? All those is like a, I don't know, where is the laser pointer? Ah, here, now I found it, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's not my one. <clears throat> so the type system and also the instance system is an OPC UA like puzzle, like puzzle pieces. You can have your objects, you can have an object methods, different variables, and of course, some properties. This is your whole class definition of OPC UA. In the information model, it looks then like that. Here you have, I just take any example, we, we done a production equipment type, it's an object type here. Then you will get methods on this, variables on this, and of course you can define properties, and these properties have also meaningful information like engineering unit information, so they can tell you, oh, it's round per minute and not millimeters per second or meters per hour or pieces per day, for example. From the <coughs> type system here, what you see, you can create one or multiple instances of a type. Now I, I talk again about those stupid things like information modeling, isn't it? And I do not show you any glue in any way how you can solve this problem. Just I wanted to extend a namespace is very important in OPC UA. So a companion specification coming with some companion spec namespace. Namespace is a unique identifier. So you can have several nodes. A node is always 
one of those puzzle pieces here, one element in the address space, and it is beside a name or a number has also a namespace. And the instances usually you're using your own namespace. That means you could have here a companion specification of rubber equipment type, and then you say here, this is my nice OPC namespace, whatever. So it's just a differentiation between the type system. Again, you have the class, and now you implement the class in one way, or you use it as a client. And that you know the difference that you are not in the type system, that you are in the instance system, and do not get any conflicts with the nodes. You should create your own namespace. It's not necessarily, but it's a good idea to do it like that. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> So what, what can you do now? You have now those things in any way. If you have a running PLC program, and this is very important now, because now you have something, it's just an interface. It's, it's not something real existing at the moment. It's just an interface instance somewhere. And you have maybe your running PLC program. Then we thought at Siemens, it makes no sense just to say, put all those here in, and then you feel free, dear customer, because we would like <coughs> you would need to rewrite your whole program. What we are thinking it's the best way, and what we implemented already since version 15.1, is a so-called mapping. That means you have here your interface instance, and you can do a mapping to your existing PLC data. What that means also for integrators is very simple. You do not have to rewrite and retest your program, because you can say, OK, this element maybe should go to this PLC data element. So that means you have only to test your interface. Your whole machine program can be still there like it is. It just needs, of course, it needs to fulfill all the elements, the mandatory elements in the interface. So how Siemens can or will help the customers, we have built up a, a so-called Siemens OPC UI modeling editor, Siome. If you enter it in the Google, you will end up with Simone, <laughs> because it's a German girl name, but the name is still correct. And by the way, here you will get the full internet address. It's a free downloadable tool, which, <coughs> which allows you to do the following steps. You can import an information model. You can define your own structure types. You can define your own methods, and so on. This will be the first step when you get some companion specification. For example, press this button and load this model into Xiaomi. Create your own namespace, as I mentioned before. It, you will see it then here. This is then for instantiating the type system. Here also you see when you instantiate a type, in the instance model, you have here a product, production equipment type. You see in the instance the meaningful information about which type it is following. From that, a client know if he implement this facet or if he implement that, he's, he know exactly what he needs. He exactly waiting for some mandatory variables, properties, methods. So that means you can prove with a client when you implement it, it <coughs> like a, <coughs> sorry, if you implement a client against a companion specification, directly the client can prove is are also mandatory elements there, is there something missing, are there the data types, the real ones, because this is all defined in the type system, which data type is uh, expected for a variable, and which range maybe, and of course, which engineering units does a variable or a property have. You can, of course, as I mentioned, you can add methods to that. 
The best is then, of course, you download it and uh, just gamble a little bit. It's similar to the UA modeling tool, just with a different purpose. The UA modeler from Unified Automation is to generate code, and for us is to have easy access to our tier portal, to our PLCs, and can make the mapping. In a nutshell, first step is import of information models, companion, specific and companion specifications. Sorry, I have a bit of dry mouse. The second step is instantiate types. That means you create from the type the real instance or several instances of this, those type. After that, you have create the mapping of those and stun. That means you can download it directly, transfer it to the PLC. Thanks a lot. To your PLC. There, there are also two possibilities existing here. Once we call it greenfield mapping, that means here you have something in the instance model and you try or you want to or would like to build a completely new machine. So you have not existing machine, nothing there. There you can just drag and drop an object to the tier portal here. So this is here a window for our tier portal. This is a software where we where you can program our PLCs and maintain our PLCs. We call it tier portal and automatically all data blocks, all user-defined data types, also, also structures and also method will be with drag and drop generated in your PLC program. This is one way. And the other way I already said before, the so-called brownfield mapping, there you have two possibilities for this brownfield mapping. One is directly you drop a data block to Xiaomi, then you will get your own specification, but you will get an interface which is exportable as a node set file. So by the way, I didn't mention, or nobody mentioned it before, the OPC UA interface description for trans, if you want to transport it from A to B, we call it node set, and it's standardized, that means this is an XML file where it stands and standardizes how will look an object, how will look a reference, how will look a variable, and so on. So all those things you can also export with Xiaomi and import, for example, in a back of PLC. So for example, the PLC, Siemens is a server, you can import it in back of and he can create the client, vice versa. If back of is an OPC or a server, you can import that one here, and you can create our client interface exactly that it follows exactly this interface what's here. The second thing is, this is a usual way, I would say, you do in starting. You have your built up setup machine, you drag and drop not the whole object, you just drag and drop such variable, and then you get here the mapping, and it, you also can verify the mapping if the web mapping is valid. So if the PLC data are existing and has the correct data type. Yeah, that was, thanks for your attention, was just a short introduction and how Siemens, how you can do it with Siemens and a little bit technical introduction to OPCA. Do you have any questions?